Derek Chauvin trial handed to jury. And this is our topic report. As Chauvin trial closes, jury sits in the crosshairs of factional Tinder threaten. Uh, in the crosshairs of factional Tinder. I don't know what I was writing there. Oh, I, I, I cut off. Hmm. Factional Tinder threatening world war. That, uh, or, uh, threatening, uh, oh, that's right, threatening the nation. And this is, I don't want to overplay this. Is this an f- existential threat to the stability of the United States of America? I don't think so, but I do think that it is the significant uh, bellwether as far as the stabilization of the United States of America going forward in, in terms of how everybody reacts regarding the, the, the nature of the verdict, whether he's uh, guilty or not guilty. And this is our topic report for the topic, Minneapolis Chauvin Trial Fallout Tracker. And our top link is prosecution, defense, both appeal to jurors' common sense and closing ar- arguments as Chauvin murder and trial. This, uh, this is from CBC.ca. Now, I just this, this is, I, I picked this uh, the top link there, especially because they use the term common sense. And this is something that common sense is a term that's used to cut off dissent, to cut off argument. It's like saying trust science is another way. Uh, nobody really has a corner on exactly what common sense is. Common sense is when you don't have the proof and you're making an emotional appeal. And so if both the prosecution and the defense are making an appeal for common sense, it tells you that neither side is, I would say, it tells you that neither side is really all that confident in the cases that they presented. And I, I don't know. I feel for the human beings. The There are 12 jurors that are going to decide this. And I can't imagine being one of the jurors and and actually having the boldness to have an opinion of my own, to actually, to to from a Christian standard, we are called uh, righteousness, justice. It's justice is not favoring the poor over the wealthy or the the power or the establishment. Justice is not. It, it's just not. Well, justice is not favoring anyone. So if the poor is wrong then the poor gets convicted. If the establishment is wrong, then the establishment gets convicted. So if you're a Christian and you're on this jury, your commitment should be to justice. And the justice would be to make as an informed decision as you can about whether they've proven their case beyond a reasonable doubt or not. And I, I don't know. And I will tell you that my interest in following this trial in some detail is really not all that great. And the reason is, is I'm much more interested in the reactions than I am in the trial itself, because the truth of the trial is, at this point, it's, it's, it's pretty arbitrary. And you will have conversations with factionals, whether they're on the left or the right, and their, their, their opinions vary so greatly. It's, it's hard to actually form a real opinion. Even if you watch the trial itself, it's hard for you to form uh, an objective from a Christian perspective, a justice opinion based on any evidence that's that's being shared as, as you know, in to, and I, I followed it to some degree and I, 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 te- I look in briefly and I think, oh, OK, well, there you go. Can't really make make hide nor tail of it. But uh, the CBA.ca says Derek Chauvin used grossly disproportionate force against George Floyd when he pinned a 46 year old black man's neck and back with his knees in Minneapolis court. Heard on Monday, and jurors need only believe their own eyes and use common sense to render a guilty verdict against the former Minneapolis police officer. This wasn't policing. This was murder. Some other stories now emerging that give you a sense of, of, of how people are taking advantage of this, this crisis to advance their factual interests. So Facebook, this is a corporate nationalist. So corporate nationalists are looking at this as more opportunity to establish their 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 ungod given right to be the moral censors, the moral authorities of what is what is right and what is wrong and what is good and bad, and to that end, Facebook preparing for Chauvin verdict will limit posts that might incite violence. From the New York Times, Davy Alba writing, Facebook on Monday said it planned to limit posts that contain misinformation and hate speech related to the trial of Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer charged with the murder of George Floyd to keep them from spilling over into real world harm. I you're, you're not going to you're not going to make a difference one way or another. You just actually your actions are just going to incite 
one side to, to violent tendencies over the other side, but you're not going to stop it. Minneapolis lawmaker proposes law to strip convicted protesters of food stamps, unemployment benefits, and other gro- pro- government programs from the right, from the blaze. A Minneapolis, and uh, this is, this is the, the, the right is reporting on this. Maybe like it's a good thing. The right, the alleged upholders of the Bill of Rights. The, when I say the right, this is the terms that these factions use for one another. I think of them all as being far, far authoritarian right by the European classical sense of the term of what they would define as left and right. A Minnesota state lawmaker wants to strip convicted protesters of their access to government programs, including food stamps, student loans, and health care. Republican State Senator David Osmesk authored the legislation as the nation awaits a decision in the jury, jury trial of Derek Chauvin. Okay, I don't want to read the rest there, but wow. So convicted protesters lose. I mean, that's you want to set that standard. You want to set a standard that we can. I mean, you, you realize Republican lawmaker, quote unquote lawmaker, that the laws that you create will be used against you. So if you actually were to get this passed and the quote unquote left could then use these laws to do the same thing to your protesters who are convicted, convicted other than, well, I, I don't even know. I don't know that necessarily once, I mean, in general, from a Christian justice perspective, you do the time, you pay the price, and then your rights should be restored. This, this that debate, uh, felons, for instance, losing their gun rights. I, I don't believe felons, unless they're convicted of a violent crime, should lose their gun rights in perpetuity, or or felons that lose their their voting rights. I, I I'm and this is this is along that line. This is this is a police state mentality. And then to that end, then we have from the left, the Daily Coast. Do you speak English? Minnesota cops add insult to injury when they brutalize journalists of color. And then from Free Beacon from the right, Minneapolis schools to close as city braces for violence. So it's certainly affecting our children. Minneapolis Titan Security National Guard from usatoday.com. From Fox News, Al Sharpton touts private jet before joining George George Floyd's family as Chauvin trial concludes. He's just getting that cha-ching-ching. Ching. And then the world watches as a Minneapolis jury and braces for reaction to Chauvin trial outcome. And that's a little bit of taste of what's going on even before the verdict has been announced.